Home. Chapter 48. A Miraculous Ladybug Fan Fiction Written and Narrated by Mira Rose. Artwork by XAA. You can find a link. You can find a link to the artist in the description box. If you haven't already, don't forget to check out all 47 chapters. You can find a link to them in the description box below. If you haven't already, don't forget to thumbs up this video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment. If you don't know what to comment, put Lady Noir Bets. Please enjoy chapter 48. Adrian Agrest as Cat Noir. Truthfully speaking, Cat Noir's life was a bit of a mess. He'd gone from as near perfect as it could be in his power to just a chunk of oops literally overnight. Besides finding out his father was his arch nemesis who tried to kill him on multiple occasions, he'd also learned that his mother was kinda sorta alive. Still not clear on that part, actually, but he'd figure it out later. The denial and anger had come, but the latter hadn't left. Cat was so furious with his father that he was numb, as though the situation hadn't hit him yet. Clearly it hit Ladybug, but somehow he was more upset with the situation hurting his love than the situation at hand. Perhaps that's why he could go back to the apartment where no one, at the time of arrival, knew was his, and sit across from the man no one knew was his father and listen to the chatter of his teammates until Ladybug arrived. Perhaps it's why, when she did arrive, he kept it together, nonchalant like it was any other superhero gathering. Perhaps it's why, when Ladybug placed a concerned hand on his shoulder, he leaned over and kissed her hand before kissing her face, brazenly in front of everyone. I knew it, Gabriel grumbled, squirming under his bonds. Oh, darling, we been new, Rena said, collecting a bill from Carpace as he sighed. I knew I should have gone with less than 24-hour post-hoc daddy capture, Carapace muttered. Cat laughed off the implication that his best friends placed bets on when he'd kiss Ladybug as Viperion, too, forked over cash to Rena Rouge. If only they knew they'd been dating under the radar for more than a year. Although, he wasn't privy to that information until recently as well. Ladybug also laughed, but it was much more forced than his. So, what do we do? Cat asked, turning his attention to her. Well... She trailed off, and he knew this was too much for her. Hey, he said. We decide together, okay? I'm back! The door snapped open, clattering as it hit the wall adjacent to reveal Queen Bee in the threshold. Had she kicked it? Sabrina was behind her as well, carrying her weight's worth in bags while Chloe, Queen Bee, sipped from a tumbler with a metal straw. Ah, that's why. Nice to see time hadn't changed much. Queen Bee's eyes narrowed when she saw Ladybug, grabbing a drink from Sabrina in a way that upset her balance and trotted over. Here, you must be parched from listening to the drabble of this room, she said. Uh, thanks, Ladybug said, taking the tumbler and reading the label. Wait, we haven't taken this loser in yet? Even though you're here? No, I'm... Ladybug hesitated. Debating... Girl, what's there to debate? Super terrorist, duh. What, you can't be rational because he's Adrian's father? Ladybug crossed her arms. What's that supposed to mean? 
Girl, please. Buzz off if you're going to pretend to not know. I've seen you look at him at events. The looks you give him is enough to make a woman flutter with jealousy. Cat sat, smug, as he listened to Queen Bee go off. It was that noticeable that she liked him? That made him incredibly happy, but he'd never volunteer that information. At least, not as Cat Noir. That'd be weird. She's right, he interjected. Just because he's a celebrity and a friend's father doesn't mean he's not subject to the law. The room stared at him. So that's it then? Rena Rouge interjected. We just hand him over to the cops? He shook his head. No, we take them in together. Clearly, the rest of the room didn't follow. Even Viperian's stare was suspicious. Cat, Ladybug began, putting a hand on his arm. Come on, folks, he said, standing up. This apartment was too crowded. Let's go. Where? Queen Bee asked, seemingly more annoyed that they weren't drinking her gifts than anything else. Where else? The Tibetan mountains. <gasps> you mean... Rena Rouge began, clapping a hand over her mouth. Ladybug might be the guardian of our miraculous, but we need to go to people with more experience as to what happens when they're abused. I chatted with Nuru a bit. Nuru crawled out from the bag he brought, trembling as Gabriel growled. And he's agreed it's the best course of action. Of course, Ladybug gasped. We should have asked the Kwame what to do. I'm guessing you want Daddy to pay for this, Queen Bee sighed, clearly ready to detransform to use her phone. No, Adrian will be more than happy to pay to put his father on a plane, Kat said, trying not to sound too smug as Ladybug narrowed her eyes. Glances flew across the room with a variety of reactions, but no one objected. Good. Meet at the airport in an hour? Ladybug suggested. Nah, I'll get a car. But Gabriel... You think I don't know people who won't question when money talks? For once, Cat was happy for his upbringing and underhanded tricks. Leave it to me, LB. It's my turn to miraculous Ladybug us out of Paris. He could see the concern in her eyes, but it was better not to dwell. She nodded, a sign of timid trust, and he left to go be, well, himself. It was time for Adrian to pull every favor he had. Thank you so much for listening. Chapter 49 is on the way. In the meantime, you can check out these other Miraculous Ladybug videos for more fanfiction. I will catch you in the next one, and if you're still listening, put Money Talks in the comment section. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!